I want to speak with you for a few moments about a solid foundation. You know, this is something that uh, we, we've talked again about this before. Uh, we've uh, talked about the chief cornerstone in, in times gone by. I don't know, probably about three years ago. Uh, we had a lesson talking about the chief cornerstone being Christ. And as we continue to think about our daily walk in Christ, we want to think about that solid foundation that we must have uh, in Christ. In 1 Corinthians 3, starting at verse, well, at, just at verse 11, says, For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now we look around us and we see a lot of others attempting to build foundations that are something else, that are not the same foundation that Christ had built. You know, as we look into the scriptures and as we even look around us, we can see that there is a powerful God. You know, Psalm 19.1 tells us about uh, the heavens declaring the glory of God. And as we look around us and we can see that we, we ourselves are fearfully and wonderfully made, just stop and think about the intricacy of our, our human bodies, our minds, and how they work. It is truly a marvel. As advanced as our technology becomes, as advanced as our computers become, we, they don't hold a candle to what God has designed in the beginning. And so let us never forget about that and keep that as a part of our foundation. You know, in Genesis 1, verse 1, we are told, In the beginning God. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And, and, and that, the first few words, in the beginning, God, is a foundation. We remember that that is where everything came from. So that we don't get too uh, wrapped up in our own thoughts and our own grandeur that we, that we might allow into our minds. Now Psalm 100.3 says, no, 100, 100 verse 3, uh, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. You know, there's uh, uh, in the world today, which is, it can be positive. You know, we tell our children, you can do anything. We, you can do anything if you just put your mind to it. And those are good thoughts to send a child off to school with so that they understand that if they have a, a, a thought in their mind, if they, if they have a, uh, something in mind that they'd like to do as a career in the future, that they should put their mind to that and they should attempt to do that as long as it doesn't interfere with the will of the Lord. There's nothing wrong with attaining that kind of, of, of an education. Uh, but understanding who is first. Understanding that in the beginning God created all things. The ability you have to think and to learn and to understand things, that all comes from God. So we need to uh, remember that he made us and not we ourselves. Now in Psalm 139, verse 14, we read, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. The body is a is a complex of complicated creations. You know, think about, think about uh, even the eye. If you were to get, get into studying the human eye and the different things that are involved in just letting light in there and allowing us to see, to see something, then uh, we, we would be amazed. And may, maybe you have looked, looked into that. You know, there's... Uh, popular teaching in the science realm today and has been for many years that everything you see around you came from nothing but uh, we know that that's not possible it's not possible for nothing to create everything you know nothing comes from nothing you know life and intelligence came from a living god and it and it shows forth if we just open our eyes when we think of this solid foundation, remembering who we are, remembering who God is, is a beginning to that. You know, as you look at the picture on the screen that is behind the, the title there, you can see someone has propped up 
the foundation of this structure with some, some rocks. You can see that, that it's uh, precarious. You can see that it's probably not going to last forever when you, when you put something like that together. But in order to keep a building strong, you have to have a solid foundation, one that goes down to, to bedrock, if you will. Now, in, in the town that I grew up in, about 21 years ago, they built a new high school. They built the new high school on a, por on a parcel of land that was previously swamp in years gone by. And uh, it was such useless land, that's where the city dump was for many years. My grandparents talked about going down there and taking their trash down there every week. And uh, I guess there was a guy down there named Tiny that ran the dump. And, uh, and he, he would take your trash and you'd dump it down there in that swamp and they'd cover it over. Well, all these years later, they decided that this was a place to build uh, the, the new high school. So they did, and it's been standing for 21 years, going on 22. But it, remembering back to when they were building it, they brought in machines and they, they drove pylons down through all of the swamp, all the way down to, all the way down to where they could get a hold of, of uh, bedrock. And then they built on top of those pylons. They put the foundation in. But they had to get down there and get something firm to hold on to. If they had just started laying stone or pouring concrete on the ground and expecting that it would last, uh, it, it, the, the building would have likely fallen over by now. And the same thing when we, when we go into building our faith every day. When we uh, go through our daily lives, we have to have that firm foundation that we can stand up on. Uh, a solid foundation leads to knowing our purpose. Again, if we boil it all down and make it simple, I think there's no better verse to go to than Ecclesiastes 12 at verse 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. I, I don't know how anyone could put that any better. I don't know how that could be summed up any better for us to quickly grab a hold of that idea. It sounds simplistic, but that is it. Fear God and keep his commandments. Look into the scriptures so that you may understand what those commandments are. You know, that's a part of it. If you are a God-fearing person, you're going to study to show yourself approved. You know, Luke 12, verse 27, you know, let's look into the mind of of, uh, of Solomon for a moment and how he came to uh, a realization. Uh, Luke 12, 27 says, Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And if you think about Solomon, my point in sharing that verse is that uh, Solomon came to understand that that everything on earth was, was vanity. He had all of the things that anybody could imagine, but yet still understood that, that God had a place. And all of the riches and the comforts that we can gain on this earth, uh, we need to still remember that it really, in comparison, you know, when you compare how God takes care of all of creation, we couldn't even possibly make ourselves as uh, taken care of on our own as God does for his creation. Now, as we continue to think about that solid foundation, if we have a solid foundation, if we just allow ourselves to, to, to look into the scriptures and understand what the will of the Lord is, and we build on that solid foundation of Christ, we'll have a godly attitude. If we come to an understanding of who God is, who Christ is, and what his will is for us, we'll have a godly attitude. You know, in Galatians 5, we're speaking of the uh, verse 19 and following, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, 
drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Just looking at, the, at that list, you know, if we, if we have our mind in fleshly things, if, if we don't have that firm foundation, if we allow the desires of, of the flesh, of life, to come into play, we're going to see things among us, such as adultery and fornication and uncleanness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies. You know, how many murders in this country come about because of jealousies or because of adultery? You know, if you, uh, there, there are many, many true crime television shows that you can watch. Uh, there, there's always someone dying uh, in these shows. And uh, when you get down to the, to the crux of it, why did this murder take place? In most cases, it's because of something in this list. You know, a pretty, a pretty complete list. You know, somebody was drunk. Somebody was drunk and out of their mind and they weren't able to soberly think about what was going on. Their emotions took the best of them. They allowed that because they introduced an intoxicating material into their body. And then, and then there's murder that has taken place. All of these things, they show where that foundation is and how, how, what kind of foundation that person is, is standing upon. But if we have that strong foundation, it ought to be able to be said about us. People should be able to look at us and see the fruit of the Spirit. They should see someone who's loving, who's joyful in the face of everything that is going on, in the face of all the reasons we have not to be joyful uh, as far as our physical life is concerned. We should be joyful because we have something more. A peace, that peace that passes all understanding, as we're told in the scriptures. You know, we, we should have that peace. We should have long suffering for even something as superficial as someone pulls out in front of you or is taking too long to move at the, at the traffic light. You know, if, if you find yourself honking the horn at them, maybe rethink that. Maybe rethink the, the fruits of the Spirit uh, in your mind. And it's easy to do. It's easy to get into a hurry. I can tell you from experience that there's nothing quite so... There's nobody that is in quite, quite a hurry as much as a preacher on the way to service a Sunday morning when you're running behind. <laughs> and when you get behind people that move slow, uh, sometimes it's trying on the patience. Many years ago, before, before I was preaching, we had a neighbor, older neighbor down the road that it was our goal to get out the door before he pulled out of the driveway because if we got out behind him, we were going to do 25 miles an hour up the road that is 45 miles an hour and there's no passing zone. There's no safe place to pass. So you were just stuck behind him and that was the way we would take to church every Sunday morning. So that was the, that was the goal to get out the door before him. But uh, you have to restrain yourself and not, and not allow yourself to get too over, overly worked up. And, and if you have that solid foundation in Christ, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to step back and breathe and say, you know, in the grand scheme of life, you know, what if I, what if I make a fool of myself and, and that person understands who I am and, and it might hurt my ability to speak to them in the future about the scriptures, you know, thinking, thinking long term, because that's the whole purpose, isn't it? We just read in Ecclesiastes, fear God and keep his commandments. As Christians, we are, of course, commanded to go out and teach, to teach others about that hope that we have. We, we need that long suffering, that kindness. It should be able to be said about us that we're kind, that people can look at us and see goodness and faithfulness gentleness a person who is self-controlled and able to uh, keep themselves in check and not just run with emotion all the time now if we have that solid foundation 
will have that godly attitude. It should show itself through. You know, if you have a solid foundation on a structure, it shows through. In time, you can start to see the cracks that form in the foundation if it wasn't, if it wasn't properly footed, if it wasn't properly constructed. You know, there's uh, uh, up the road from, from our home up the, up the main street, there is a uh, person who put a, a retaining wall with the little blocks in their, in their yard. And I, I told Angela those year, many years ago that they're, they're, that la- wall's not going to last long because they didn't put anything under it. They didn't create a foundation under it. They dug to the dirt and they just put those bricks in. And after one season, that wall started to... To be wavy you could see that it wasn't that it heaved with the with the weather and then now that wall is gone it ended up falling over and they they took it out uh, over within 10 years so uh, that foundation we understand that when it comes to physical things yet we need to think about our foundation in Christ and whether or not we have that foundation in Christ realizing that that it's the only way. And those that are around us, our friends and our family, they need to know that one true way in Christ. Ephesians 4, starting at verse 4, says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Let us not forget that there is one body. Let's not forget to share that with others. You know, that can be, that can be a, a contentious conversation with family and friends. You know, imagine telling them that there's, there's one way, there's one body, there's one, in effect, there's one church. We know that to be true from the scriptures, but is that a popular idea in the world today? We see things in the world today. We see signs all over the place. Attend the church of your choice. The church of your choice. That's that's, that's nothing more than playing spiritual Russian roulette. And and beyond that, attending is not enough. You You must work to be a member of that one church. Not even talking about this physical location. You all know that, but the body of Christ, as it is worldwide. It takes more than a seat warmer in order to be in the body of Christ. We must be those that are seeking to do his will and to share the gospel with others and to do what we can to further the kingdom is is best to the best of our ability in, in this area. We know that the word is going to do the work. We know that the Lord will bring forth the increase but we have to do our best to share the gospel. And if we have that solid foundation ourselves, if we, if we have that firm footing in Christ, then the rest is going to fall into, into place. We'll have all of the, the uh, ingredients to be effective. And it may take time. It may take time to, uh, to see any of that come together. But over a lifetime, we should never forsake that time that we we can spend uh, in in the scriptures Isaiah 28 at verse 16 says therefore thus says the Lord God behold I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation a tried stone a precious cornerstone a sure foundation whoever believes will not act hastily and when we think about uh, acting hastily you know just quickly dismissing, dismissing this firm foundation, dismissing this pattern that we have in Christ. When we are building, this, or building upon this foundation that the Lord has laid for us, we need to make sure that we're in accordance with the pattern to make sure that, you know, again, if you're building a brick wall, you have to make sure all the courses are straight and that they're square with each other and they fit together. And we're, again told that the body of Christ, it fits together, each part doing its share. And that ties in with this idea of that solid foundation. So as we go out for the rest of this week, 
as we think on the things we've talked about and we've learned today and that we've studied today together, uh, think about that foundation. Think about that firm foundation and ask yourself, have I been a good steward of my time and have I been a good steward of what the Lord has given me in every, everyday life? Have I built upon that solid foundation or have I started to build out here on the not so firm foundation? Am I helping my neighbors and my friends build on that strong sound foundation or am I letting them go ahead and build on some rickety foundation that we know will fall? Now, we each have a, an opportunity, several opportunities, I'm sure, a day to share the gospel in some way, to plant a seed with someone that we come into contact with. So as we think on these things tonight, I look around us, I know that everyone amongst us here has put on Christ. Uh, but if you're listening to this on the recording or, you know, again, it's good to refresh our minds with what we must share with others. We need to ask, you know, are you subject to Christ's invitation? And a simple question like that can go a long way when you're talking to somebody. You know, I've, I've been told to think of it uh, by, by another preacher. I was told to think of it like closing a sale. Sometimes if you're a salesman and you, you, you're there and you've presented all the information, you have to ask for the sale. You have to say, so are you ready to buy this product? Well, as... Christians sharing the gospel. Once you've shared the gospel, you've planted those seeds, sometimes you need to say, are you ready to be baptized? Are you ready to take that step and to be in Christ's church? You know, 2 Thessalonians 1 at verse 7 says, and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is re revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. We can have that rest, each and every person can have that rest. Acts twenty two sixteen poses the question, and now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. If you need to put on Christ, then by all means, reach out to us and we can, we can uh, make that happen. If you need to ask for the prayers of the saints, you know, we are a family, and that is exactly what we are here to do, to build each other up and to be a help one to another. If you're subject to the invitation, please come forward as we stand and sing. Someday.